Hi friends, welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm Jack Watson, UI UX designer, illustrator, animator, and donut connoisseur. Today we've got a special Pro Tips Illustrator boot camp. For those of you who follow along with my personal streams here on Behance, you know that I really like working with the 3D effects, both classic and new, and creating isometric art. So I'll be focusing on sharing a little bit of my process with you today, going over how to create that sort of stuff. I've got a few examples on my screen to give you an idea of where you can take this. This is a project we've been working on in my personal streams, this massive castle illustration. Um, I've also got some other stuff in here that I've done in the past on streams. This one's got a lot more texture to it. We've got this fun, more uh, black and white castle going on. And then um, this is a piece I did for Johan Turpin. Um, this is some client work. Uh, I've done a couple of client projects in this style, currently working with uh, Cedar Point on some maps in this sort of a style. Let's get into it. Um, I do have a starter file today with some notes. We're gonna be moving fast. So if you're brand new and just wanna dip your toe, I'd recommend uh, the past Illustrator illustration challenge uh, called Maps Made Easy as an introduction to isometric arts. Um, to get started, there's a couple things that we need to make sure that we do. I'm gonna go over to my appearance panel over here. If you're not seeing it, it's gonna be up in window appearance. I'm gonna pull it out so we can, cause we're gonna make use of this a lot. So I'm just gonna pull it on out here. We want to make sure that new art has basic appearances checked off. Uh, typically, it's turned on by default. We're just going to turn it off. We want to do that so that we can continue to kind of draw with the three effects. Because um, if it's turned off, it's going to once we set up our three um, D effects, we're going to keep being able to work with them without having to reset them every time. So I am going to do one more thing. I'm going to make a swatch. Um, this I just need to make a, a global swatch here. I'm just going to drag this out get rid of the stroke. We'll pick a color here. We'll go with uh, a weird kind of a dark green, similar to that. Okay. So we got a swatch here. I'm just going to add it over my swatches panel. We're going to name it. Um, we're going to name it shadow. This is going to be our swatch for controlling the shadows in our 3d art. So I'm going to say, okay there. And then I am going to go over here and I'm just going to draw out a shape. Just like that, and I'm gonna fill it with white. Uh, we're gonna use white for our base color. Um, so anything that, uh, it, all of our objects are gonna have white fills. So uh, I'm gonna go up here to effects. I'm gonna go drop down to 3D materials. And for today, I'm gonna be using 3D Classic. I'm gonna go in here to the 3D Classic Extrude and Bevel. I'm gonna be using the 3D Classic effects today specifically so I can work with the color swatches for recoloring my art. And I'll also be using recolor, um, Expand Appearance to do a specific trick. And to do that, I need to be able to use uh, Expand Appearance with the 3D Classic to get the sort of vector shapes that I want. So. In Illustrator, once you've got this window kind of popped open, um, you're going to see probably going to look like this at first. Illustrator's got isometric projections built into it already. We're just taking a look here. We can see this red outline is our original shape. If we change it to isometric top, that's going to set the um, extrusion to use that shape that we drew sort of flat on and extrude up from the bottom, up from the top. So the top becomes the original shape. We pick the other options, extrude left or extrude right. That's going to make our shape either on the left plane or the right plane and extrude from the sides. So just kind of getting yourself familiar with how these kind of uh, pr these extrusions work. So picking isometric top, we're going to increase this uh, extrude depth a little bit. We'll go with something like 100. I'm going to click on more options, and in here, these settings are going to be our lighting settings. So. We can use this little widget over here to start to change the position of our lighting. So if I just kind of drag this spot around, you can see we can get lower left, lower right, um, you know, straight on if we wanted to. I'm going to go with upper left hand lighting. It's just kind of a default that I tend to um, use, but you can use any kind of lighting situation that you want. And then once we've got that set up, I'm going to go down here into the shading color and I'm going to pick custom. Um, that's going to change it to just a red to show you that something's changed. It's typically set to black by default, but if I double click on this little uh, red swatch here, I can open up the color picker and I'm going to choose color swatches. Then I'm going to navigate down to find my shadow swatch. So now I've got my shadow swatch selected. That means that it's going to pull my swatch so that if I change that swatch, the color is also going to change. 
The other couple of things I like to do in this panel um, is I like to go over here and I like to set my color or my lighting to be very, very high contrast. So under ambient light, I'm actually going to pull this all the way down. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that the darkest darks in my 3D extrusion are going to be 100% of that um, shading color that we picked, that swatch. And that's going to be important when we go to recolor this to keep that like 100% value. So it's going to give us a good range of colors. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change the highlight intensity to 100%. Not important for this particular moment in time, but that highlight is basically our base color. It's the fill color that we added. Right now it's just white. So these are the base settings I'm going to pick for the lighting. And then down here we've got one more thing we need to change and that is going to be our blend steps. Our blend steps, uh, I'm going to bring it down to three. I like to go with a really small number for my blend steps. Um, the blend steps are your distance between light and dark values on your 3D object. In this case, with a square or a rectangle, it doesn't really change the appearance right away because we don't have a lot of blend steps. If you're working with a sphere or a cylinder, you're going to have a lot more blend steps. And they're just, it's not the style that I'm going for, but also it creates a more complicated uh, 3D object, especially when you use expand appearance. You're going to get a lot of little shapes just makes it more difficult to work with. You did want a smooth color transition, you would want those higher numbers, but it's kind of a balance between like more complex shapes or more uh, smooth shading. All right, so now that I've got everything set up here, I'm just gonna hit okay. And because we've kind of set this up already to be, um, have that appearance turned off, every, every single time that I draw a new shape, no matter what the shape is, it's going to keep those lighting settings, which is going to make it really, really easy for me to kind of manipulate this illustration and add on to it without having to reset all of that up every time. So uh, the other thing that I like doing with the 3D effects this way is instead of having to figure out everything by hand, like you would normally if you were doing isometric art, drawing it just with like the pen tool and shapes, um, I can do some crazy rotation. So I can manipulate these shapes in any way, and Illustrator is going to handle all of the uh, math to create these sort of um, weird angles if I wanted to have something that looks a little bit more organic. Okay, so now that we've got our base, we can start to build on top of it. So I'm gonna grab a, another rectangle here. I'm just gonna draw out another base shape here. And I'm gonna zoom in so we can see what we're doing. I can just kind of move things around. This is a little bit too long for my artboard. And there we go. And I can also go in here and I can edit these. So I want to have a taller, kind of maybe like a main structure for like a building here. So I'm going to increase the extrude depth to get a nice tall shape here. We can um, copy and paste and decrease that extrude back down if we wanted to add like maybe an edge to the top of this building. So we're just kind of, we're drawing essentially with 3D, right? We're just drawing with the 3D shapes. We're making adjustments on the fly by going in here and changing those settings in the 3D keeping our lighting consistent as we work. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can also create shapes um, that are a bit more complex. So let's draw out another shape here. All right, so we've got uh, a square here. I'm gonna turn off my 3D extrusion bevel. So now I've just got the flat original basic shape. You can turn on and off that extrude um, from the appearance panel over here. And that's gonna give me like my flat view again. So Imagining that this is kind of like a blueprint, like we're looking from the top down or from the side flat on, we can start to add some additional shapes in here. So I'm gonna to go to the polygon tool, I'm gonna to drag it out, I'm gonna bring it down to get a uh, triangle. I'm gonna drag and I'm gonna put my triangle together with that shape there. I'm gonna uh, just kind of scale it up, right? So now we can make this kind of like, maybe this is like gonna be the roof of a building or something like that. And then I'm going to go over to Pathfinder and I'm going to merge, right? So now I've got this shape. With it selected, I can turn the 3D extrude back on and it's going to keep those settings. So I was able to kind of like build out this shape, seeing it in 2D since it's a little bit easier to visualize and then make it extrude out. But we do need to change the direction. Remember before we were working with isometric top, it kept that isometric projection, that extrusion. This time we need to go in here and we need to change it. We don't want it to go from the top. We want it to go from one of the sides. In this case, we want it to go from, instead of the left side, we're going to have it go from the right side and that's going to have it so that it extrudes like it's coming towards us back. So I'm going to pick the isometric right and you're going to see that it's kind of created like the front here, right? And then I can go over to my extrude depth and this is where I would increase those settings up to be a higher number like 400 or something like that. 
um, to make like the front entrance. So here's like a cool front entrance to our building, right? We can kind of line it up here. You can spend a lot of time like going through and, and getting everything kind of lined up. Um, if you are following along or you wanted to create something in your own style using this technique, but um, I'm not going to be too worried today about like, there we go. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, we've got a live chat going, so if you want to hop in and ask some questions, uh, chat with us and then we'll you know what you're working on. Katarina over in our live chat is asking how the rectangle is keeping the 3D effect. Right, so at the beginning we turned off this new art has basic appearance over here. This little checkbox, it's inside of the uh, drop down menu in the appearance panel. That lets me keep drawing with the 3D effects, so I can just kind of keep working. All right, so let's add another shape here. You can see as I'm drawing it out, it just follows whatever angle I'm working with, right? So actually, I'm going to select this little trick, select this because I want to use the isometric top again, grab my polygon, draw out a shape, increase the number of sides. We'll go with a nice, I think that that's like an octagon kind of a thing. There we go. We'll bring it over next to here. Maybe we'll add like some cool, like, powers to this, bring everything kind of down a little bit, just kind of making some adjustments. Again, on the fly, as you can with the uh, 3D effects here. All right, so now we've got a base here. I'm going to double click, and I'm going to increase the extrude depth here on this quite a bit. I'm going to go up to something like 900. Now we've got a, like, a tower maybe next to our structure. We can also draw with the pen tool and the 3D effects. So again, I've got this kind of... Um, I've got the object selected. I'm just going to click, click, boop, 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 boop. You can draw out. Maybe this is like a buttress or a pathway. We need to change our orientation again to be isometric left or isometric ba, 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 right. All right, so now it's extruding from the side that we want it to. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to bring it down to something like 30. Ooh, that's too thin. Let's go with 50 again. Okay, so now we've got kind of like a little pathway or something that connects to our uh, tower here, right? I'm just going to copy and paste. So we've got two here kind of connecting on either side. And now if we wanted to create the opposite side over here and we wanted to have everything line up, I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to select both of my little pathways or uh, buttresses. We'll make the base a little bit wider. I'm not going to be too concerned about the artboard. We can always scale everything down when we're done. Select all of that. I'm going to hit copy and paste, and I'm going to bring it over. And to get this on the opposite side, I can just go up and use Object Transform Reflect. It's going to flip everything over. I need to bring um, I need to bring this one in front of my shape, and I'll leave the other one kind of behind. And one little trick that I like to use for lining everything up when you're doing stuff like this is I like to use just the base object. So I'm going to copy and I am going to paste. And now I can bring this up and I can use kind of the edge here to make sure that my shapes are lined up. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to bring this up and then I'm going to bring it down and I'm just going to pull this down until it's aligned with my other side there. So we can make sure that we've got everything kind of going across here like we want it to. And I'll bring this one down. Just using the arrow key until it's in place. There we go. It's just a quick way to line everything up. All right, so we've got the basic structure down. Let's add some details. Another thing that we can do in here is we can make some modifications after the fact to our 3D shapes. So I like to build this way with like working large to small. I kind of think of it like carving, like carving a sculpture. I'm going to select this shape in the front here since we are kind of calling it our entrance, right? I'm going to turn off the 3D effect again because it's going to make it easy for me to kind of see what I'm working with. Then I'm going to go over here and let's add an entrance to this. Let's kind of make like a doorway. So I'm going to grab the shape tool, drag it out, add an extra point up here. I can pull these two points down and round them out. And then we've got like a, a nice entrance way. There we go. Just making sure everything's centered. I'm going to make a copy of this door. It'll come into play in a bit. 
but um, I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to make a compound path. And when I turn on the 3D extrude, you can see that it has kept my shape. It has just added this kind of cutout from it. So you can use comp you can use compound paths with this to create these kind of cutouts. I would use this technique to make windows, for example, if we wanted to add them along the side here. And then um, with our um, this here, this frame, I want to use object uh, ba -ba -ba, offset path. So I'm going to increase that, then I'm going to bring up the edge, all right, and I can make another compound path, and I can turn the 3D extrude back on. I'm going to go over to the 3D extrude here, and I'm going to bring it down to like 10, make it really shallow, and I can kind of put it in place here, and now I've got like a little doorway. There we go. So now this is again, you could use the same kind of technique to make a frame around your door. If you had like a door and a door frame, you can kind of layer these uh, objects to get that kind of um, look if you wanted to have that. All right, so let's go do, um, let's do one more technique and then I'm gonna recolor this. So I'm gonna grab a box here. You can also use this technique with brushes and you can do, so we're gonna add some crenellations to the top of this. Uh, crenellations are the boxy edges you see on a castle. It's going to make these towers look a little bit more uh, like towers and less like hexagons. Uh, I'm going to drag out a square. I'm going to delete the 3D effects that I don't actually want at this time and apply a black fill. I'm using a black fill here because it's going to help us when we want to change the color of our brush. It's just a way to keep sure to use like that hue shift. You'll see in a sec. So I've got this rectangle or this square. I'm going to copy it and paste it, and then I'm going to go to I'm going to drag it so I get half of the shape. So I've got half of my square. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to add no fill, and then I'm just going to drag it off to the edge until it aligns with the edge over here on the left. Copy, and then I'm going to move it over here. This setup here is going to allow it so that when I have this brush repeat, it's going to keep the distance perfect between these because of the two halves on either side. So it's just a way to kind of set up a repeating brush. So I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to go up and I'm going to make a new brush. This is just going to be a pattern brush. We just want it to repeat. And when I hit OK, you can see that it spaces out exactly how I want it to. I'm going to go over here. And the one thing that we need to make sure we do is change this to hue shift because that's going to allow us to use our swatch color again. And then I'm going to hit OK. So now I've got a brush in there. And then I can just kind of move this off here. All right, so we want to add some uh, crenellations. First, I'm going to copy and paste this shape. I'm going to switch it to a stroke. I'm going to increase the stroke weight up so that it actually creates like an edge there. Probably need to go up to something like 60. And then I'm going to drop the extrude depth down to, we're going to go with 100. When I bring it up, you can see that it kind of adds, adds an edge. We can expand it out. Maybe it sticks out a little bit. Copy that shape again. This time I'm going to apply my brush to that. And at first it's going to look crazy, but we're going to bring that brush uh, size down. You can see now it kind of lines up with that. We might want to go with like something like 0.4. There we go. I can also bring the extrude down so that we can get a more uh, boxy kind of a shape to our um, crenellation, something that looks more like a square. And put it right on that edge. And now I've got some crenellations. We can also use that brush on our rectangle here. So we can do the same thing, applying a stroke, bringing it up to a higher, oh no, actually we don't. We can just apply our brush. There we go. Bring it down to a lower number um, I think I did four or five for this, so just for consistency, we're going to do the same thing. And now we've got some crenellations on our castle. So we're start we're moving really fast. We're getting a lot of stuff blocked in here. This is a point in which now that I've got everything kind of structurally sound, I might want to go through and change the colors of this. And I think I might have messed up here, but we can fix it really quickly. Um, I needed to make sure that I set reset that um, swatch color. So if I go in here, uh, you can see that all of our shadows are using that swatch. And hopefully, although I might have changed some things. Okay, yeah, you can see it's not changing. 
Sometimes it does this um, because I didn't make sure of a specific step and I'm going to show you that to, to fix this in a sec. So we're going to make this like a different color, like a dark maroon. And um, this sometimes happens if you don't reset this to be your swatch color. Uh, I just tend to get into the habit of doing it every single time that I make a 3D shape. You can select uh, select same appearance and sometimes select a group of things to change the colors all at once. It makes it a little bit easier to deal with. Um, if you had done this whenever you made a 3D shape, it would have kept those colors. That was just a mistake on my part. So we can go through here and clean this up really quickly. And then we're going to go on and make some arches at the base of our tower using a trick with the... Um, using the expand appearance trick. So I'm just going to go in here and fix everything really quickly. You can see that time it worked because I had actually made sure to set the swatch. I just didn't do that on the other ones. So that was my mistake. But we're still early enough on in this design that it wasn't a huge deal. I promise that changing the shadow color will be more straightforward or the uh, highlight color. Just resetting these to be my purple everywhere. There we go, there we go. That was a mistake on my part. So if you had set the swatch, if I had set the swatch every time I made these 3D objects, it would have fixed that issue. Okay, and if we wanted to recolor the base uh, color, since we're just using right, we can do uh, white right now. We can do select, same, fill color, and I can just change this color here. Go with like a warm color. That looks good. I'm going to copy that hex code. All right, so now I've got like a sunset kind of a look. Select, same, stroke color. Okay. So now we've got that going on. So now we want to add some more detail to our tower, right? Still looking a little bit plain. So I'm going to go here, copy and paste, and I'm going to make this, uh, let's say, a three-story tower. So 900, we're going to do 900 divided by three is going to give us 300. Pull that down for the base, copy and paste, and then we want, uh, you know, 900 minus 300, which is 600 for the second half where it meets. Um, we can also do like 275, copy and paste, and then do uh, 25 to create sort of like a base for this to sit on. So just using some math in Illustrator to uh, quickly set up our tower. Okay, so now that we're here, I can take this shape here and I can add some arches to it. So I'm going to quickly draw out a rectangle similar like we did before to create that shape but I need to make this shape this time into a um, into a symbol so I'm gonna open up my symbols panel view symbols and I'm gonna add this as a symbol then when I click on this I can go to map artwork this is going to give me a wireframe flat view of every side of my object. And anything that's highlighted in red is going to be the thing that's selected. So I'm going to go back one. We're going to add our symbol. I'm going to scale it to fit. And uh, I need to kind of rotate it around because it's upside down right now. And then we've got our first one. I'm just going to add this to each of these sides. And those are going to be our arches. Flipping around. All right. Okay. So now that I've got that set up, I can go to object, expand appearance. I'm going to double click into here or isolate this group. I'm going to use minus front on each of these to create each of these uh, arches that I need. I'm going to delete everything I don't need, paste in front, group, and now to the group, 
I'm going to go to Effect. I'm going to add a new extrude and bevel. And it's going to do something weird, but we're going to go to Front. And that's going to give us just a front on view without any perspective. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to bring this up to like something like a thousand, a really high number. And now I can increase the perspective and that's going to create, it might be a little bit hard to see, but that's going to create some depth in the interior of my uh, columns. So now I've got this sort of uh, transparent archways. I can go in here and add, um, another shape behind this we can scale it down so now we've got some like depth in between our columns right just like that so yeah that's a really quick way to add some cutouts and add depth perspective using that little neat trick to um, expand and then delete what we don't need and use a front view with perspective to create that design. You can also use this same technique to add some uh, texture to the roof here. I've got some symbols over here. Again, you would use symbols. You would just go and find the flat edge that you wanted for that. And you could add, um, you know, a shingle tile to that or something like that, rotating it around. And that's how you start to add some textures. So you can play with those techniques, build out your own sort of a castle here um, using the map artwork to add some textures, um, using that recolor artwork trick to show different um, designs. But I think that is going to be all that we have time for in terms of demonstrating any um, techniques. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me today on for a Pro Tips Bootcamp and Illustrator. I know we went super fast. We had a lot to cover. I hope you enjoyed the stream. If you have any questions at all about what we did, you can always ask in the uh, Illustrator Discord. Show, share your work if you choose to create something in the Illustrator Discord as well. I'd love to see it. Um, we went over sculpting with the 3D effects, using color swatches for adjustments, uh, working with compound paths to create complex shapes, and using brushes and symbols to add textures. We covered a lot. And uh, I'll be back on Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific for more Illustrator Pro Tips covering opacity masks. We've got more live content all day, every day here on Adobe Live, on Behance, on YouTube, and I will see you all later. Bye, everyone!